All right. Well, we have a very exciting interview coming up with Courtney Charles, who is the VP of Basketball and Franchise Operations for the Raptors 905. Courtney, how you doing? How you doing, my man? Great to meet you. Pleasure. All is well. You safe and healthy over there? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing fantastic. Things are kind of cooling down here. It's getting back to regular life where I'm at. How about you? We're here trying to get ready to at least open up a little bit over here and, um, you know, try to get some community things going as we've missed our fans. Yeah, 100%. So talk to me about how you got involved with sports growing up. I, I heard that you were pretty impressive. You had a track, you have a lot of track experience. <laughs> So I was able to run a little bit, you know, ran anything from 100, <laughs> 400, um, ended up getting a scholarship to the U.S. And then I ended up coaching um, at Marshall University in West Virginia. So uh, I've had a great uh, track career um, on the track and then off. And then I was able to get back into basketball, which was always my true passion, just not what, any, not what anybody wanted to give me a scholarship for or to pay me to play. So um, once I got the opportunity to be an intern and to give my shot of growing and building as a business executive. I, mm -hmm. I took advantage of it and here we are today. What was that transition like going from track athlete? You obviously have a lot of interest in basketball to be able to transition your career into that trajectory, that direction. You know, it, was, it wasn't as, as difficult as it may seem going from, you know, sport to sport. Um, you know, it's something I, I really tried to use with our players is it's important on how to run efficiently from baseline to baseline, right? So um, the transition of, of track and the agility of, of what makes a player nimble and quick um, all goes into all the same things of just finding a way to maximize uh, the use of your body. And then obviously the basketball skill is something that uh, the, the average player has worked on and done what they needed to do uh, to build. And then it's just trying to make it get to that next level. So. For me, it was more of the business piece of trying to understand the business of basketball compared to track. It's not a track is not a high revenue sport. Um, mm -hmm. It's something that's short. Um, it's usually something that people really get excited for around the Olympic time. Um, but basketball is something that's now 365 days of the year. Every aspect of our business has grown from the draft, summer league, preseason, um, your regular season, your playoffs, and then even the Olympics for basketball as well. Mm -hmm. So the, I know the Raptors 905 have had a very impressive run and some very successful seasons and playoff runs. Talk to me about your role within the organization, what you help the team with. So, you know, I've been with the Raptors uh, before Raptors 905 for, you know, almost 14 uh, years. And, and within that time frame, I've done everything from scouting to learning more about the business side. And then eventually I spent a, a few of my years with players particularly uh, helping them really learn how to use the resources and maximize their potential for on-court and off-court um, development. So it's something that I was able to connect with them and, and you know, the players like Pascal and, and Norman and Kyle, who you've seen just grow through our tenure of, of getting better at their craft. Uh, it was really, you know, the joy of working with them to find out who they are, to find out how they, uh, really want to get better and the goals they had and then eventually winning a championship in uh 2019 is the is the ultimate success yeah speaking about basketball the rumor has it that you do dabble in some nba 2k and you may or may not have learned a thing or two about the business side of basketball from playing the my jam mode man you were you know we're dating myself if we go back to when i first started with this and 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 the uh the years of Iverson being on the cover, for example. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you, you would have been a very young man at that point. Um, but yeah, it was really the the franchise mode that really got me into video gaming and to keep the passion I had for basketball while I was doing track at school. Because obviously my scholarship didn't allow me to play basketball. I wasn't allowed to play rec at all. So it was something that I wanted to stay close to the game. I wanted to know all the players. I wanted to see how the business side of it grew um, and you get to make those decisions, right? You gotta, you gotta be able to give somebody a contract and give it a certain amount of years and see how he performs and what his ceiling ends up being. And you get to set the ticket prices. And there was different things within the game that really brought me into playing and not just for the entertainment of playing and, and passing some time through school, but it was really to 
understand the business side of it uh, from not only a GM, but even from an agent side and, and then obviously from a business side. Yeah, and interestingly enough, I actually got my start on YouTube doing the same thing uh, where I started an ND NBA 2K14 with the My GM. I have played every 2K, but I only started playing them seriously since 2K10. And then I saw an opportunity where nobody was uploading content on My GM mode and I was in love with it. Like there was mo like they allowed you to relocate teams. You can change the yep. price of the tickets and the merchandise. And you're trying to run it up. And in the off season, you're picking up staff. I thought all of that was fascinating. It was unique, especially at the time. So that's very interesting, to say the least. Definitely. And even in the free agency, right? You got to figure out if you want to overpay somebody just to have them on your team. And do you go maybe with somebody younger uh, who could potentially get better? So there was a lot of the different aspects that made you realize um the growth of the game because in real life we don't know you know what somebody could be three years from now you know it was great to have malachi flynn in the g league bubble we get to see him out play out the year with the raptors but we don't truly know what it looks like three years from now but in that game mm -hmm. you can sim a little bit you can play a couple of games and next me you know you're five years in Okay, for my own sake, because I, I always wanted to ask this question, I feel like you might be the expert here on this. When it comes to developing players, and the, Raptor, the Raptors 905 has done such a fantastic job of that um, in the past few years, what do you look for in a player? Is there something if you see in a player, you'll immediately think to yourself like, oh, that's a winner? Yeah, I mean, without giving away too much of our secret, because it is, you know, um, something that every team's trying to figure out, and, and it's never a perfect uh, recipe to what we've uh, built in our philosophy but ours is really just trying to find a way to truly one connect with the player find out what truly is their goals and how they plan to buy in and be part of a team um, and then it's trying to figure out the resources that help them to get to that next level and, and give them a, a plan and find a way to strategize it's working with their agent and making sure that everybody's on the same page that we can all get to the same place so those are just a few things that we take, you know, a serious um, in-depth look at. And we really started with a lot of reps at 905. If you look at the players that we've had, they found a way to play two games in a day. They found a way to practice a, a couple of times, you know, with both teams. And and the, the reps is obviously the key part, but it's finding a way to get that balance, keep people healthy and safe um, and, and really, you know, doing everything that we can so that they can learn as much in a short period of time. Yeah, it's fair to say it's fair to say at this point that Toronto produces some of the best players we've seen transition from the G League to the NBA. Uh, is there any, like, just if you had to pick one person, one standout, who's the most impressive player you've seen with your own eyes go through the 905 system? Ooh, that's, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't pick one person. That's going to put too much pressure on me to, 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 <laughs> to answer my phone call. <laughs> um, but I think what we've done is we've been able to do it with so many players. And I think that's the benefit of truly what it is. I think if you just look at this G League season, hats off to uh, Henry Ellison, who we were able to call up. Hats off to Alizé Johnson, who got called up um, by Brooklyn. Hats off to Gary Payton, who uh, did a great job. But you know what? Nick uh, Stauskis did an amazing job for us, and that's going to help him in the future. Uh, Matt Morgan, who you know and, and has yeah. been a great uh, – supporter of 2K Uprising is is somebody who truly after a year with us, his second year this year was unbelievable. And he was able to really be comfortable and build that confidence because he'd had that experience. So for me, there is not one person, but I think we are at a point where we can honestly say we've actually got a few. Well, that's awesome. I mean, that's that's an even better answer and the safer answer. Well, Courtney, Charles, I appreciate you for joining us on the show. Again, uh, we appreciate your work, man. And, and as soon as we're able to, I'd like to come out to a 905, man. It's been a long time since I've came to a game. No, I appreciate all that you're doing, man. You're doing a great job. It's an amazing thing to see this league grow. Um, and we definitely look forward to seeing you at Paramount Fine Food Center. Got it. Thank you. Thank you again. Take care.